Uh, hello everyone, my name is Puyar Ostami Azra. Uh, I'm a new PhD student uh, in software engineering lab at Rugumons. Uh, my supervisor are Tom Menz and Suhaib Ben Tayyip. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm a new student, so I've just started my PhD working on predictive modeling of socio-technical health in ecosystem, uh, evolving software packaging ecosystems. I've already got some great reviews and I'm looking forward to learn more uh, from your um, further reviews. First, uh, we need to have some uh, information about the matter. Uh, we need to know what are the software ecosystems. Uh, well, uh, eco uh, softwares uh, usually um, uh, develop and uh, co-evolve with, with each other in um, ecosystem uh, and uh, we have them in groups and not a uh, singular like uh, old times. Uh, so we call them software uh, ecosystem, which includes uh, many useful information in them. Uh, but uh, what are the socio-technical dependencies and networks? Uh, well, uh, as you might know, uh, every kind of ecosystem have uh, usually in software have their uh, social aspects and technical aspects and this uh, the different aspects of uh, network uh, are dependent to each other. For example, developers are communicating with each other or in technical form, uh, the programs are dependent to each other. So uh, they create these uh, kind of networks that uh, have some kind of relation in different aspects. But uh, what are the software packaging ecosystems? Uh, we can mention that uh, Almost every language have uh, at least one packaging uh, package manager for itself, and these kind of package managers include all the packages related, uh, all the different um, programs that is uh, in that uh, package uh, in that language written in that language, uh, which are usually are connected to each other, uh, so they create a software packaging ecosystems. But what is the most important to us uh, for my study is socio, uh, socio-technical health aspect of software projects. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there are the social aspects and technical aspects. Uh, each one of these uh, have different kind of uh, health problems. For example, the way the uh, developers are communicating with, with each other or even the technical health uh, related to the dependencies problem that we have uh, maybe the problem that would be uh, the problem would come from, uh, for example, other packages have problem in their developments. Uh, the, to this moment, my tentative uh, tentative uh, tentative statement is using uh, ML-based techniques for predictive modeling of socio-technical aspects can be used to gain information about and improve the health of evolving software ecosystems. So I'm going to uh, use ML-based techniques uh, for predictive the create a predictive uh, predictive model in socio-technical aspects. Uh, so I can use it to gain information and also improve the health of uh, evol uh, evolving software ecosystems. Right now, I have uh, four main research questions for my uh, PhD. The first one is how to attract, attract newcomers to projects within a software ecosystem. Well, uh, these new, uh, newcomers, when they want to uh, start working in a, in a project in a software ecosystem, have their own... Uh, they, or, uh, they, uh, they use a specific information to choose their projects. So uh, we want to uh, study these informations uh, from, uh, to find out what is the most uh, important facts in the projects that attract these newcomers. These newcomers can be uh, all the schools, uh, persons who have already worked in different pro programs or even the new, uh, a uh, new person that is uh, joining uh, in software development, open software development. The second research question is about uh, the socio-technical activity. How does the socio-technical activity and abandonment of project by contributors affect project and ecosystem health? 
For example, uh, when uh, you have the, these developers, they are working on the code and also they are interacting with uh, other develop uh, developers. Uh, they, these activities can have effect on other uh, persons in that ecosystem uh, and can uh, also differ the health situation of this ecosystem. So I want to study furthermore on that matter. For third research question, I want uh, to look about a prediction and recommendation for replacement of abandoned uh, developers because uh, at some point of the developing uh, program, uh, we may uh, lose some developers uh, due to many different reasons, which I'm going to talk about a little bit. Uh, so we should be ready and uh, uh, predict this and even uh, be able to recommend this replacement for these kind of developers. And for my fourth uh, research question, I want to uh, see if I, we can rely on social media activity like activity in Reddit, Stack Overflow and Twitter uh, to improve our prediction models. Mm, okay. So uh, for this, uh, this matters, I have a, a little bit of background study. Uh, I, uh, the first matter that uh, uh, I want to talk about is truck factor. Uh, truck factor is important for us because uh, it mentions uh, what, uh, who are the most important developers in uh, our um, software development system. And also when uh, we have the ecosystem, we need to know uh, what what who are who is uh, who are the truck factors people? So I've I've read about them and there's a couple of books since 2010 and uh, as we can see even uh, in 2019 we still have uh, different works on this matter. Next, uh, I wanted to learn a little bit about the reasons uh, behind different. Uh, uh, different uh, things that happen in the projects. For example, reasons behind project failures uh, that uh, Coelho had uh, studied a little bit and he found out uh, the, some reasons that uh, people may uh, even abandon the project or the project is going to uh, be uh, a failure. Uh, also, there are different factors uh, behind uh, why people choose to uh, contribute to a project. Uh, I uh, have studied those to find out a little bit about those factors. And uh, what I've learned a little bit is uh, about contributors' estate. Uh, the thing that is important is that uh, when the persons work in uh, open software development, uh, they have three different estates usually. The, the one state is that they are alive and working in the project. The second state would be that they are asleep. So they don't uh, usually work in this state, but uh, they are open to help uh, different developers. And the last one is uh, being dead. Uh, so they have no um, communication with other developers and uh, no relation to their work anymore. Uh, these are important uh, for software health, so I thought that I need to study this. Uh, sorry, I don't see my page. Let me just go back. I have problem with uh, seeing a slide seven. Do you see them? Uh, we cannot see the slide, indeed. Uh, let me just go to... Uh, should I? Uh, Maybe there's uh, some animation or something? No animation on the slides. Um, should I upload it again? Yeah, or maybe try to share your screen. Uh, let me share my screen. Screen one, share. Entire screen, share. Is it shared? 
I think we can see the previous presentation still. Hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe you want to, or you can, can you skip that slide or is it the last one? How does it? No, no, uh, let, let me just, let me uh it's the uh, slide seven yeah uh yes I th well okay. because you have uh, number eight on the next slide here so i'm not sure whether okay so this is slide seven yes okay. the one that we cannot see yes uh, just a little bit uh, i'm going to talk about it a little bit uh, yeah. uh the this slide uh, was all uh, also uh, the all the stuff that I've uh, studied a little bit, and it's uh, about the predictive models that uh, are uh, using uh, in 2019 that try to predict uh, when the developers is going to um, become uh, the in the data state, uh, and also uh, another study that uh, try to predict that the project is going to be uh, failed and abandoned, and it was the. Uh, there were studies that were mentioned in this slide, but uh, slide uh, eight. Uh, the point more more important thing that I found was the in the related work is socio technical congruence or mirroring, uh, mirroring hypothesis. Uh, the main idea is that uh, when you have uh, some kind of structure, human structure, for example, your company structure and you want to create a software and do uh, that software structure with eventually eventually shows the structure of your company how the uh, different departments work with each other so this can uh, easily show that uh, how uh, how important it is to combine the so uh, social part and technical part of our uh, study together uh, for further more information uh, to use uh, in the in this road Okay, and the, the last work uh, in the re this uh, socio-technical is the reference coupling uh, by Bilinko that uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit more. Uh, as you can see here, uh, th there is an example of technical dependency graph that is made by, um, by Bilinko. Um, the, what they use is the cross-referencing in the comments of, uh, for example, GitHub. They use the data of um, uh, GitHub dump uh, of 2014 using Git, uh, Git torrent. Uh, as you can see, they have created a dependency graph, uh, and it's only technical dependency graph. What I'm uh, going to work on, try to make, is a, uh, creating a graph uh, using uh, not only the dependency graph, but also the uh, social uh, information uh, that exists in our ecosystem. As an example, uh, now we can use, for example, a PyPal uh, related to Python ecosystem. Uh, we can gather all the information of social information and add, it, add this information to the technical dependency graph that uh, we, we are going to create. And uh, this uh, graph that I have in mind uh, isn't only going to use the cross-referencing in, in the comments, uh, but also different matter like uh, checking the codes itself uh, to create more concrete and better graph. And uh, as, a, uh, as an insight that uh, what can this kind of uh, graph gives you, uh, you can see two different networks uh, from this graph. Uh, that is the contributor, uh, contributors follow graph and owners follow graph. In the paper by uh, Blinko, she mentions that uh, owner follow graph um, is very related to, uh, to the structure of the technical graph dependency but uh, the contributors uh, network isn't uh, related to that. Uh, and she mentions that uh, these owners, um, because it's more important to them but, uh, to see what happens uh, to those dependency uh, in their projects, uh, they tend to be uh, uh, more similar to the dependency graph. 
But as you can see, uh, there is uh, lots of Im information in these graphs and uh, they can give, the, give us uh, insight in different matters, uh, different matters on how, uh, for example, uh, simple contributors work with each other and find other projects and how owners try to find different projects to work on and be connected on. And uh, the, uh, the other step is my gathering, uh, data gathering step. Uh, it's uh, created for, uh, from four different steps. The first step is uh, I'm going to gather all the relevant data about socio-technical packages um, in the packaging ecosystem. For example, NM, uh, NPM, I'm going to gather all the related information in these packages, try to create a graph based on that. In the second step, I'm going to gather uh, the, the repository related to this ecosystem because uh, the packaging ecosystem itself uh, doesn't uh, contain any uh, code related information. So I need to gather the information from the repositories. And uh, in the third step, I'm going to clean and transform this data. For example, uh, identity merging and things like this uh, stays in this step. And lastly, I'm going to gather the data related in the social media. Uh, as I mentioned in the research question four, I'm uh, trying to find if there is any uh, useful information in uh, different social media. So this step is uh, only for that. And for can you research, can I ask you to quickly wrap up, Puya? Otherwise, we won't have time for for questions and answers. Okay, okay, uh, okay. It's over. Uh, for my research plan, uh, uh, I'm going to first in the first step uh, for my short term goal. I'm trying to find important factors uh, for attracting new contributors and create a machine learning model to improve this attractive uh, acti attractivity of uh, project. For my mid-term mid goal, I'm going to answer the research question two and three and uh, study the social aspect of contributors' behavior in different projects and also try to predict a replacement for project developers based on the, their social technical network. And for my long-term goal, uh, I'm going to study the impact of contributors' activity in uh, social media in ecosystem. And lastly, try to create a health prediction model for the ecosystem using this social technical information that I've gathered. Thank you for your attention. Uh, any question or suggestion would be awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I did. Thanks, uh, Puya. Very, very good work. Very interesting uh, uh, research directions you got the, here. I think uh, I share a concern with Eleni. So Eleni, uh, uh, Dr. Constantino was uh, was wondering, uh, uh, and I share her concern, was wondering uh, what is the core focus that you want to achieve, right? Because you mentioned a whole bunch uh, of topics and a, and a, a, a very wide spectrum, indeed, of potential research questions. Uh, so, for example, in the in the first four research questions that you mentioned, uh, and in my opinion, there are also others that emerged <laughs> all throughout the rest of the slides. But in the first four, one underlying dimension was abandonment, and in, in principle, also abandonware. I think that that could be a very interesting take or a very interesting focus. Uh, and then you have a number of, of these. So I guess Eleni was asking, uh, you know, where do you really want to go? What is going? What is the most pressing issue that that, that software 